what people really want and need today is encouragement. You can do this. You can do hard freaking things and look around you for the inspiration. Don't compare yourself to these people on TikTok or Instagram or people on the court starting kicking butt. Like, don't compare yourself. Be inspired by them. And then take what they're doing rad, let it fuel you and make it your own, right? All right. I'm here with the one and only Carrie Walsh Jennings. Carrie, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. So excited. <laughs> Carrie, six feet of sunshine. <laughs> you, <laughs> you played at Stanford as a two-time national champion. You're a five-time Olympian and you're actively going for your sixth. You're a three-time Olympic gold medalist, all with Misty May. You're a bronze Olympic medalist with April Ross. And those medals make you the most decorated beach volleyball player of all time. You're one of the greatest athletes of our generation and an icon of the sport of beach volleyball. You're the co-founder of Platform 1440. You're the wife to Casey Jennings, a mother and an entrepreneur. Your IG is at Carrie Lee Walsh and also at plat Platform 1440. Carrie, thanks again for being here. Oh, my pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> All those things you just mentioned make me so proud and they make me so hungry. I want more. Inspiring stuff. Well, let's get yeah. right into it. What does living an inspired life mean to you? Oh, Aaron, I mean, right off the bat. Um, you know, I think living an inspired life means you're living sincerely. Um, you're pursuing things that really mean something to you. You're not faking it. You are brave enough and feel safe enough to be yourself. You know, um, you're brave enough, um, and safe enough to mess up and to learn from it and to grow. Um, but for me, living an inspired life is just doing what you love with love in your heart. Um, and it's, to me, it's the only way to live really, mm. you know, it doesn't mean it's all rainbows and sunshine all the time, because I think living an inspired life, the inspiration allows you to get through the really hard times that are going to come regardless of who you are, how much money you have, how young, how old, whatever you are, crap happens. Um, but living inspired to me is the antidote to being overcome by life's challenges. You know, it's just, it's the fuel to the fire of the undying spirit, really. Mm. I love that. I love starting with that question because that's what this whole project is about. It's about trying to, you know, um, share tools for inspired living and, and specifically for the youth athletes, you know? So is there anything that comes to mind for the youth athlete right now in, in this weird COVID time, you know, how do they, how do you, uh, you know, suggest they stay inspired? Man. Well, God bless y'all. That's for sure. You know, I, I, I have this philosophy that I believe, um, I believe in God. I have a great connection with God. I talk to him every day. I talk, Jesus is my homeboy. I love Mary. Um, but I really believe that before we come down to earth, like we have a choice. We get to choose our situation. We get to choose the time and we choose our parents and our situation to a certain extent, because everything that we choose, the people, the environment, these are things that we're going to grow through and learn through, you know? And so to me, something that empowers me in these crazy times, it's like, I chose to be here. And so for you little ones who are going through hard times and perhaps your seasons went away, um, you know, you guys are all stuck in the house. You're not able to live freely. Um, you chose it. And if you act like you chose something, even if you dislike it with all your heart, if you act like you chose it, what I've learned from one of my favorite heroes these days and forever, Jordan Peterson, he says, if mentally, if you're in a hard situation and you just feel resigned to it. They're like, oh my gosh, this happened to me. Like literally you're the victim and you're waiting to be saved. And you're just going to be kind of, there's going to be an onslaught of situational things happening to you. But if you raise your hand and be like, I am choosing to choose this, you can own the situation and you can rule it and you can show up on purpose with the level of energy and intention and focus um, that you want, you know? Yeah. So for me, um, for all you little ones out there, man, life is meant to be happy. You're supposed to have fun. Um, it's your job to make those things happen. You know, yes. no one's going to save your day. So find the joy in your day. Look for the good stuff. Be creative. You know, if you're locked down in your house, get, get weird, <laughs> get creative, <laughs> explore. You know, I feel like hard times make you focus on the simple things, um, mm. and focus on what you can control. So I encourage everyone, myself, adults, kids, just to focus on what you control with a good attitude. Yeah. You know, I love this spiritual edge that you have, you know, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm spiritual myself. And I know that you, um, 
you've had some experience with Abraham Hicks. And I actually yeah. want to talk about that for a second because I've actually went to see her twice. Have and you? Completely changed my life. So um, good. Yeah. And so anyone who doesn't know uh, Abraham, uh, Esther Hicks channels this entity called Abraham. And without getting too into that, basically... <laughs> It's all about law of attraction and, you know, and like you said, life is supposed to be fun. I have it on my keychain right there. Um, could you talk a little bit about the integration of spirituality and sport? You know, to me, it's just for me, like I'm, I'm body, mind and spirit, right? I'm not just as body. Like I'm, I'm the majority of me is spirit. The majority of you, I believe is energy, the spirit, mm -hmm. your soul that to me is infinite. And we have these bodies and our job is to merge everything. Um, but the spirit, and then for me also sport is life and mm -hmm. life is sport. You know, yeah, I don't have, yeah. I don't have these, everything is the same to me. It's all integrated. And so um, for me, spirituality, I was raised Catholic. I'm very proud of my Catholic upbringing. You know, it gives me a great foundation in religion and in spirituality, but I'm just so much more open now because when I first found Abraham Hicks, I'm like, gosh, is this legal? This woman is like channeling this entity, you right. know, and um, it, it was just called Abraham and there's a woman. It's like, it was so interesting to me, but everything she said was so rational and reasonable and, and never, there was never any discrepancies. Right? right. And to me, right. like right. law of attraction is real because my life, experience shows me that truly what I focus on more of it comes into my life so if I'm focusing on the lack or if I'm focusing on the problem I'm literally I become that right. but if I focus on the solution if I focus on what I want if I pivot from negative self-talk to positive self-talk I can win a game I can get myself out of a funk you know and so what I love so much about Abraham Hicks and and in general spirituality it's like I am I am equipped body, mind, and spirit to handle anything that's thrown my way. And something that makes life easier, sport easier, um, the challenges of 2020 and 2021 easier is when you own up to that, you know, and mm -hmm. you kind of, you, I have trained myself by nature and by nurture to focus on the positive, right? And to me, law of attraction is fundamentally focusing on the bright side of things. And it's not, it's not ignoring reality. You you're in reality, but it's like, once you live the contrast, as she says, you, yeah. once you live what you don't want, you know what you do want. And that to me, like living hell has led me to heaven. You know, mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. part of it. So I love it. I went to see her once, but I listened to her at least a couple of times a week on YouTube. Um, and it's so funny, Aaron, before we went there, I was going there with Casey, my husband, my brother-in-law, mm -hmm. Troy, and then Carrie Walkvogel, one of my trainers and my dear friend. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Carrie, what if, cause there's one story, um, where Abraham had, was at a seminar and someone went up and was like, Abraham, can I give you a hug? Um, and she's like, no, you know, we need to stay away. It interferes with Esther. And Esther had to start going to a bathroom like underneath the, all the hotel rooms to escape the crowd. Anyhow, I was like, Carrie, what if we run into Esther? Like, what if we run into her, you know, and uh, when we're waiting in line at the bathroom and Carrie's like, that would be so fun. And so there is a first break. We go to the bathroom and there's this longest line ever. We're like, oh, we're going to miss the real, you know, when she comes back. Mm -hmm. So we found this other obscure bathroom. I open the door and Esther walks out and I go, oh, you're amazing. Oh my God. And she goes, can you help me get out of here? Like I scared the <laughs> shit out of her. I was like this big girl. She's such a peanut, but it was like, sorry, that was such a weird story, but it was like, it happened, you know, and the manifesting. And like, I really do believe like, if you believe it, you will see it. And I wanted to see her and I wanted that exchange and I got it. And it was just fun. So that's so cool. That's so yeah. cool. And, you know, like, yeah, I, I listen to Abraham every day. I encourage uh, anyone, whatever your background may be, whether it's religious or spiritual, just to get some of that inspiration, because she does these rampages of just like just positivity, you know, and it actually for me, it helps me reprogram some of my my self-talk. And I, I'll, I want to get into self-talk in a little bit. Um, sure. But yeah, I, I want to stand Abraham for one more thing. I'd like you to the idea of your inner being is really interesting mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. She talks a lot about that. I'd like you to just talk about that from an athlete point of view. Um, because, you know, we have these, this, this feeling inside of us that is like a, a warrior, right? Mm -hmm. And spe specifically you, like you have this warrior mentality, but I was, I was hoping you could maybe bridge the idea of inner being to that warrior kind of energy. Man. 
Well, I believe at Lena, whatever's going on in the inside of me is going to manifest on the outside of me. Right. And so the warrior that I want to be, the Jedi that I want to be, it all starts with my mindset. It starts with where my heart's at. It starts with what you just said, like my emotional state. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love to listen to Abraham because I listened to her, them a lot before my matches because my vibration a hundred percent rises. And when I'm competing, I've been encouraged by Mike Gervais, who we both know who I love. Um, he's one of the guides in my life. Um, you know, he's encouraged me to think about well, how do you feel when you're at your best? Like what, right. what is your best state? And I have come to find like happy and like positive and just kind of dancing and just, just being silly me is, is the best way I can go out there and kill people <laughs> on the court, you know, right. but it starts with that high vibrational state. So my inner being, Aaron, I mean, fundamentally, I hate labels. Like at this point in my life, I don't, cause lab, to, la to label something is to limit it. I believe my inner being literally is limitless. And I want to manifest that in this 42 year old and a half of me as I compete, you know? And so my inner being is just the best part of me. It dances with whatever is thrown my way without judging it, without trying to run away from it, without fear. Um, it just knows my inner being there's a quote from Paul Selig, who's another channel. And he says, the truth of who you are is unafraid, like period. And that to me is my inner being unafraid, you know, and it's that. not, yeah. it's not fearless. It's just unafraid because I know whose hands I'm in. I know I'm capable and I know I'm divinely supported and created. And so if I can live in that space, it doesn't mean to be perfect. Doesn't mean I want to be perfect or play perfect. It just means I'm going to be okay. You know? Right, right. I love that, Gary. No, oh. that, that that's <clears throat> that's beautiful. I I guess that makes me think of your a recent interview I saw you with on um, Lewis Howes. It was I think it was a couple years ago on the School of Greatness, and you last year was it last year? Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. And you said um, I want to be a I want to be a hunter when I compete. Okay. I was just saying like it made me think of this warrior mentality, and I wanted to kind of pick your brain on on mindset, right? And I'd like to kind of get into self talk and mindset as you enter let's talk about the olympics for a second since we are Aha. in a an olympic year like that that feeling of entering the stadium right and that mindset <laughs> let's get into yeah. that yeah share that a little bit if you can it's just so fun <laughs> you know it's like i i'm an athlete who sincerely loves training like happiness and joy to me is a feeling of progress and where I feel my, my progress is in my training. I love working hard. I love being sharpened and all of these things. And so when it comes time to enter the arena, to me, if I've done that right, right, meaning I was consistent, I gave everything I had, I was aligned with my partner, I showed up, you know, with kindness and sincerity and whatever I was, I give hundred percent, right? So if I lived my training right, by the time I get to the arena, it's just time to have fun. And yeah. literally just a press play. Um, and so, you know, it's such a cool thing. Like when you're waiting to go out and be announced for an Olympic match, like generally you're holding hands with your partner. Like there's four athletes back there, right? Both teams, everyone's kind of like bouncing around, um, engaging with their partner, not really looking at the opponents. Um, and just, it's just this, it's such pure positive energy. And it's, you know, it's just, Preparing to prepare, like Abraham says, is so fun. And I just love that moment because I'm at that. That's like when the game begins for me. It's like when I'm waiting in the tunnel and I'm right next to my opponents and I'm like feeling them and I'm sensing them. And that sixth sense or whatever it is that I believe that I have when I'm at my best, when I'm, when my inner be being is on fire, when I'm playing, that sixth sense is so gnarly. And so in, in the tunnel, my mindset is, I got you. Like, mm. no, this is not your day. Um, not even this is not your day. Just, I got this. We got that this. Confidence. This is, yeah. this is going to be so fun. Whatever right. happens, I want it, you know? Um, and so the mindset is always like, I don't care. Throw anything at me. It could be 90, you know, 900 degrees out. It could be five degrees out. You guys could have the best games of your life. I want to beat you at your best. Um, and I want the greatness in you to bring out the greatness in me. Mm. And, you know, that's, to me, that's the most fun mindset. And just to kind of keep going on it, Aaron, like yeah. one of my favorite Olympic heroes is Natalie Cook. She's a Australian five-time Olympian stud gold medalist from the 2000 Olympic games, beach volleyball. And she was doing a podcast with Casey. And she's like, you know, my goal, whenever anyone would watch me compete, that they would, they would walk up and they would just always think I was winning because my body language was that of a champion. And she's like, even if I was down by 10 points, I want them to look at me and to feel like I was winning. 
you know? And so mm. I just, I love that mentality. I feel like to me, that is the hunter, you know, um, there's that other, you know, Eli, the hip hop preacher. Um, he's like, a lot of people want to be lions until it comes time to do what the lions do. You know, it's like the hard work and, and the, the desire through the hard parts that are going to show up, you know, getting stuffed and shanking eight balls. Like that's part of it, like outlasting. And that to me right. is the warrior mentality, you know? I love that. Yeah. I love that. And, and you mentioned like, I think you're basically trying to say being unconditional too. Like that's part of yes. the, that's part of the the Abraham kind of mindset. And you know, you mentioned the outside conditions. Like you know, I remember, I think I think it was Beijing and it was raining. Right? Was that Beijing? Yeah. Yeah. Dumping. And, uh, dumping. Yeah. Right. Like, could you just talk a little bit about how to be unconditional? Right. Like unconditionally oh. warrior mindset. Oh, Aaron. Well, I don't know. That's a secret to a magical life. <laughs> That's for sure. Right. Um, I'm so glad you said a conditional because that's my favorite teaching of Abraham. Right. Me too. Like me too. Because because it's all self-sourced mm -hmm. to me. You know, I think every, anything that's conditional, you're relying on something outside of yourself to make you happy, to make you confident, you know, to make you feel good, whatever it is. But if it comes from the inside, that's when it can be sustained and where it can be unconditional. Mm. Um, and so I think just to have I think to live an unconditional life as an athlete or as a human, it's it's your habits. Right. And it's like, right. Abraham talks about pivoting a lot, right? If you notice your bad self-talk, do you notice you're in a funk, notice what you're thinking about and then choose a better thought. Yeah. Because that we, contrast, we, use that contrast to pivot. Yeah, totally. Right. And again, living the contrast is important. It shows us something. It illuminates what we want. And that's a beautiful right. thing. But I think in today's world, we're like, we're literally being trained to be distracted constantly. There's so much input, you know, um, I think remembering that we are the thinkers of our thoughts. Like that is such a fundamental teaching that I want to teach my kids, you know, like my boy, Joey, he gets so bored so easily. And I'm like, babe, dude, that's your own fault. Like, look how much great stuff that there is around. Like you have it within you to go make the best of this, like go right. and do that, you know? So I think being unconditional is the goal for all of us. I think it's the hardest discipline ever. My hardest thing to be unconditional about, um, is like within my relationships because I'm deeply affected by other people's energy, you know, and I care so much and I'm a pleaser and all these things. Um, my hardest relationship is with my husband who I love and adore and who I just, if he looks at me wrong, I just, I feel so hurt, <laughs> you know, or if I do the same, same thing to him. So anyhow, as an athlete, I feel like Michael Jordan was unconditional in his desire to, for excellence and to win. I think the best of the best of the best were unconditional in their pursuit and then their high expectations of themselves, Kobe Bryant as well. I love your book behind you. Mm -hmm. Misty May Trainer, Logan mm -hmm. Tom, myself included. I feel like the best of the best are unconditional more often than not, especially within their craft. Um, and right. hopefully that shows up in their life because life is more important than sport. Sport is certainly a mic microcosm to sport. And it's so important, especially to us athletes. Right. But, um, you know, I think I want my my... I've never won a match where, when I've been fighting with my husband, like never. So I, my outside off the court life, like is very represented on the court, you know? And so I am working for that balance, not balance, but I'm working for the joy on and off the court that allow me for the best performance ever. And being unconditional is part of that. I love that. I, you know, and I really admire your uh, vulnerability and authenticity with your with your marriage and your relationship with with Casey Jennings and shout out Casey Jennings. Uh, I got to play against him like like I was telling you and he's just so fun to play against. And I, I want to rematch Casey. I know oh, I you're going to listen to this. Well, he he got you. me, he's but I want to rematch. Again. <laughs> Aaron, he's he's so dope. He's just talk about a warrior. Like I was there man. when he, yeah, I was there when he won Manhattan Open and with uh, Matt Ferber. Oh, I was right there, and I just was just so inspired by his his game and his fire. Um, but those I, boys I, played so free. Yeah. After so many years of striving and efforting and like really like trying to crack the egg, like that was the first tournament start to finish. They played so freely and yeah. they had so much fun, and that's the recipe that yeah. I'm after. You know, yeah. um, playing pissed off for a long time worked for me. Doesn't work for me anymore. Now I'm going for the joyful dominant thing. And Casey and Maddie and their coach, Scotty Lane, at that time, they really lived that. Yeah. Well, I was saying like, you know, I really admire your vulnerability and your willingness to share, you know, uh, what you've been through specifically with Casey and, and you know, your ups and downs. And um, I think right now the world needs that. The, the world is yeah. seeking that. We're, we're seeking vulnerability and authenticity. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, I'd like you to touch on that from this framework. So you mentioned Mike Gervais and, you know, shout out Dr. Mike Gervais, amazing sports psychologist. And uh, he's, he's been a guest on this show too. Um, but he taught me something that I'd like you to touch on. He taught me FOPO. Have you heard of that? Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He taught fear me that of... fear of, of other people's opinions. And I, and I'd like you to touch on that because you're in the spotlight so much, you know, and yeah. because of your willingness to be vulnerable and authentic. And I think, you know, myself included, I think all of us need to do a better job of diminishing FOPO right not oh, like geez. it's it's like a it's a killer of success right so yeah, like we, yes. we need to figure out specifically kids specifically the instagram generation where we're all mm -hmm. looking at what other people are doing yeah. so I'm, I'm 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 kind of rambling a little bit but i'm trying to frame yeah. this this question of like how how do we get rid of fopo how do we stay authentic how do we stay vulnerable and how do those things help us man i don't i think that's just fundamentally why it's so important to know who you are you know, and know who you want to be and spend time focusing on that. Like for so long, I feel like for all of us, certainly in my personal journey, like I was, I'm, I'm literally, I'm such a pleaser. Like I really care if people like me or not. And I mm. want them to like me and I love people. And, and that definitely kept me quiet, you know, and I definitely took a lot of SHIT that I normally wouldn't, you know, like, um, I just, I cared so much. And so I kind of ed edited myself a lot. And when you edit yourself and you don't express freely, you can't work through complicated things because you're living in your head. And I feel like the moment you write yourself like a, a blank check to be yourself, like it's the most liberating and empowering thing ever. And I feel like what people, what people really want and need today is encouragement you can do this. You can do hard freaking things and look around you for the inspiration. Don't compare yourself to these people on TikTok or Instagram or people on the court starting kicking butt. Like don't compare yourself, be inspired by them and then take what they're doing rad, let it fuel you and make it your own. Right. Love and that. I had to, like in my thirties, I figured that out, you know, like I was so pissed off. Like, why can't I have Misty's hand and touching the ball? And finally my coach Marcy was like, Carrie, you're not, stop it. You're, you're never going to have that. And I'm like, no, but it's possible. He's like, it's not. And I'm like, damn it. You're right. <laughs> you know, but he's like, we're be you like, you're you, you know? And, right, and right. Like, I feel like we all have so much magic in ourselves. And if we're trying to be other people, it just diminishes who we are. And it just makes us walk on eggshells. And that's not a recipe for a satisfying or fulfilling life, you know? And for me, um, I, I only know how to be vulnerable. I only know how to, how to speak what I believe is true. Um, cause I'm just a terrible liar, you know? And I had some, some really gnarly interactions on social media, you know, with all this heightened political stuff and just, you know, with COVID and just people's viewpoints, you know, I, I approached the social media world very naively being like, I'm just going to like express as sincerely as I can and try to encourage people to think, you know, from this perspective and, you know, didn't even, wasn't even that worried about it. And then it's just all this backlash comes. So I understand people, <laughs> I understand people wanting to edit themselves and wanting to retract and pull away. Um, but I think that's just why it's so important, A, just to be mindful of your words, um, but B, like, and then also to curate your, your community and your environment. You know, like I don't right. need the world to love me. I need to love myself first and foremost. I need my people to love me and support me and I'm good. You know, the rest is bonus, you know, um, but Jordan Peterson, I mentioned him before. One of the other things he says, which I love so much, he's like, anything worth doing is worth doing badly. Mm -hmm. And in today's day and age, when it's so hard to have conversations, I really believe anything worth saying is worth saying badly because you have to, you have to work through it. Like spirituality and, and immune systems and, you know, politics, these are hard things to speak to. And the more you talk about it and the more exchanges you have, the better you're going to be at it, the more understanding you're going to have and the more depth you're going to have to it, you know? Mm. So I just want to encourage everyone just to be thoughtful, you know, and I will, I want to give everyone the respect to hear where they're coming from, to not presume anything and just to be open and, and, and that means I can't compare myself to them. You know, I, right. I look at you as a teacher. I look at anyone, everyone I meet as someone has something for me to learn from them or to mm. be inspired by. And um, when it's not given back to me, I'm like, what? <laughs> 
you can't judge me. I'm not judging you. You know, right, like right, it's right. so hard these days. But anyhow, I just I think vulnerability is beautiful. I think there's so much strength to vulnerability. Um, I think being who you are is literally the secret and the magic in life. And that, yeah. you know, and I just think we should start there and then just find inspiration outside of us, not not comparisons, you know. Right. I love that. I I, I love that. And you know, your idea of self awareness and your um, desire to be a Jedi right? Or to bring ah. the, the inner Jedi out of you, like the, I share that with you, like, I'm very curious about that, you know, that, that, that realm of like that inner, that inner warrior, that inner Jedi that wants to come out, you know, and, and, you know, making room for it, right? And, and finding mm-hmm. the inspiration to allow that best version of ourselves to come out. And I feel that yeah. you, you are, you're on that path, you know, and I, Man. I really admire that. And I, I actually wanted to kind of segue that into, um, you know, your talk with uh, with Shannon Lee on the Bruce Lee um, podcast. Um, so Bruce, incredible. Yeah. I mean, Bruce, you know, uh, uh, we don't even have to say anything about Bruce Lee. I no, mean, everyone should know yeah. who that is, but like they the idea be. of being like water and like flowing yeah. with, with all these things that we're talking about. Um, I, I was hoping you could touch on that. And then I also wanted to see if you could frame your, your kind of thought about, you said three things that you, that you, on that, um, podcast episode that I, I listened to, you said you kind of want to channel your inner Bruce Lee, your inner Muhammad Ali, <laughs> and your inner Freder, Freddie Mercury. Like, could you yeah. just like, like, I love those three, like, approaches, you know, and like finding mm. inspiration from those three icons themselves, you know? Yeah. Well, and I would, I mean, the list is a little bit longer, like Kobe is sure. always in the court with me. Misty is always in the court with me. Mother Mary, you know, I have a list. But to me, when I bring up Bruce Lee, Muhammad Ali, and Freddie Mercury, Mm -hmm. um, they're the most authentic people I've ever experienced. You know, Um, it's, I mean, and that's just, and they were so free and they were so badass because of it. You know, it's like, I don't, I just want that in my life. I want that inner peace where I'm just so in the moment. And those people seem to be so in the moment where they made everyone feel like they were the king in the world. And Freddie on stage made everyone in the audience feel like he was singing just to them. You know, Muhammad Ali, he literally, he danced. He was a dancer and a world champion, you know, heavyweight, like he was water. And then Bruce Lee just defines all that for me, you know, the way he articulated. So yeah, man, I... Mike Gervais encouraged me to look for three awesome things every day, awe inspiring, cool, cool. awesome things. And I have kind of evolved that into, I always want to know where, where to find my inspiration if I need it. Right. right Cause right. I source a lot from the inside, but the external motivation and things that hit my heart that can snap me and pivot me from funk to the present moment is really important to me. And those three, those five, you know, Freddie, yeah. Bruce, Kobe, um, Misty, they all, they all get me out of my funk because they're champions and they didn't complain. They just did it, you know? And they, I heard this thing the other day to have true faith allows for patience. And if you're impatient, if you're impatient, it probably means your faith is wavering. And as someone who's so faithful and who says that every single day, when I like, I'm trying to compare this to volleyball, like with Brooke, there's so much urgency and there's, we have such a big dream right? Qualify and then win the Olympics. Um, And I'm so impatient with it. And hearing that quote, a lack of patience is a lack of faith. I was like, oh my God, am I just full of it? Like what's happening? You know? And it made me revisit all these things and like sit down with myself being like, Carrie, like, do you have as much faith? And if you don't, what's going to get you there, you know, and, and just kind of get rid of all the baggage that's in my way. And all the baggage that's in my way is the outcome. Mm you know, and the perfection that I want to be, you know, but then Mm. I channel Kobe and I channel Freddie and I channel Bruce and Muhammad and they just, they just did it. They just kept showing up and that's what champions do. So. I love that. I'm assuming you would encourage others to find those type of people in their lives, right? You're right. right. Yeah. You know, within, within 1440, I'm, we're creating a program called Rad Academy. Yeah. And basically it's very similar to, it sounds like to your project where we want to inspire the kids and everything I want to do, Aaron, is empowerment. Because mm. you're, you're, you're the hero. I'm the hero. Everyone with me are their own heroes, right? I don't want people to be waiting to be saved. 
because that's a hard life, you know, and it's so right. fun to feel purposeful and empowered. And so within Rad Academy, um, we're, I'm doing all these bite-sized little lessons on how to, you know, for on the court stuff and on the, off the court stuff. Um, and one of the kind of exercises that I have them go through is find your three people, find your Bruce, your Freddie and your Misty, you oh. know, and learn about them. And, you know, why watch the film on them? Why do they inspire you so much? And then once you kind of get down to the core essence of that, then you can work on becoming that, you love know, that. and it's just kind of that trigger. Right. Um, it's important. I love that. Um, you, you mentioned Kobe. I, I wanted just to yes. just stay on him for a second. You know, RIP um, to the legend, huge inspiration for me growing up and, and millions of other people around the world. Um, did you have any interactions with him at the Olympics? Yeah, or? man. Yeah, we, Kobe and I interacted, I mean, a handful of times and every time was so special. Um, the stuff outside of the Olympics was always most special. You know, he showed up for Misty and I and a couple of times prior to Olympics, sending us like messages on video, like good luck, go cool. get him, we're behind you, that kind of stuff. The last wow. time I saw him, the last time I saw him was he had, he was probably like six months out of his Achilles injury and he was eating a Manhattan beach at Petro's and oh, he was, wow. it was like midday and he was, he was eating lunch with his team. And he's like, Carrie, I was walking by, it was all dirty after practice. And he's like, Carrie. And I walk in there and I sit down and I'm like, can I see your scar? Then he showed me and it was the gnarliest, thickest scar in his Achilles. And we just had this great little interaction. And he was always asking about my family and um, yeah, I love him, you know, and Mike Gervais, one of the things he tells me to do on the court, if you're ever feeling anxious, give yourself a word to spell, right? So you serve, receive, big point, like how do you get yourself not focusing on the anxiety? You give your, your brain a task. So in Rio, I spelled joy. I spelled now, but now that Kobe is in heaven um, and he's still, he will forever be an inspiration to me. Every time I serve, receive, I'm going to be spelling his name. So you're going hey, to be seeing me saying Kobe a lot. Oh and man. I, I adore him and his wife, Vanessa and their girls, you know, mm. and what a legacy that man left. And he's just getting bigger. Like he's too alive to be gone. You know, um, Bruce Lee, Muhammad Ali are the same, you know, yeah, they just, yeah. there's too much, too much energy that they gave to the world to be gone. So I'm mm. grateful that I have him in my heart. Well said. I, I love that. And I actually want to segue that into uh, injury and rehab since he went mm. through a huge injury and he was able yeah. to come back and you've been through six, six shoulder surgeries and you're mm -hmm. able to still compete and still actively, you know, go for your dream. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, the mindset of rehab? I've my, myself, I've been through two knee surgeries, but, but, you know, I feel like sick. I mean, that's a lot right here right <laughs> like that's that's intense I, and you know to anyone listening who might be going through a tough time with an injury mm. you know can you give them a little inspiration about how to bounce back and to keep going yeah well i think when it comes to injury a i mean i just think mindset is everything i right. think you know like how you frame the injury and like to me like it would like right when I got fixed, like the day of my surgery, out of surgery, I'm now healing. I'm not injured. I'm healing, Love that. you know? So even just the choice of words shapes your, your energy toward it, you know, your body's ability to heal. You know, if you keep calling yourself injured, I mean, our bodies listens to us, you know? Um, right, and so right. I think mind mindset is hugely, hugely important. Um, I, 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 broke my back in college, you know, fractured my back. Wow. I was told I'd never play again. I had a terrible shoulder. I mean, that's very dramatic because it wasn't anything gnarly. It was just, it was what it was. I was going through major growing spurts. Um, and, but I was told I was never going to play again. And then my sophomore year in college, I had, you know, I had two shoulder surgeries and they said, you're probably not going to play, you know, much more after this. And so I had been put through the ringer, you know, growing up and my parents are athletes. And every time I got hurt, whether it was in basketball or baseball or volleyball, my mom would always say, Carrie, like, this is going to make you good. This is going to like, literally there's opportunity here. And she meant it 100%. Like this woman, like talk about a warrior and angel, this woman has it all. Um, and so, cause she lived it, you know? And so that's always been my mindset, you know, like there's opportunity here and I have so many more tools in my toolkit because I've had to play through injury. Now, Aaron, when I talk, it's, it's 100% easier. It's scarier, but it's easier to deal with a catastrophic injury where you need surgery that you can go and get fixed and then just focus on recovery than it is to deal with chronic injury. Right. Like, so those in chronic pain, like have my heart and so much compassion. And when something's chronic in you, I feel like 
you always want to go to that spot, right? That's injured. But mm -hmm. when something's chronic, I believe you have to address the whole system. Just like after a major injury with my shoulder, I had to bring it back into my body. And, you know, cause it feels so by itself, you know? Yeah. But and everything's so, connected, right? Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Like right. the, yeah, the pinky on my you know left foot is connected to my right shoulder. And so I have to remind that my shoulder is so supported, but with the chronic stuff, I feel like you have to go back to ground zero you know, and you have to, if your back's hurt, you don't necessarily focus on your back. You know, mm. you focus on your hips and you focus on your feet and you focus on the stuff around it, take the pressure off your back and then it'll breathe and heal and all these things, you know? So I think that's one of the, and you focus on your nutrition, you know, why, mm -hmm. why is my body so inflamed? You know, you focus on your thoughts. Um, everything is an input on my system. You know, all the social media, is this inspiring me to get healthier or is it like toxic? You know, I, that mm, sounds, that's huge. that sounds crazy, but everything affects us, you know? Oh, that's absolutely huge. And, and, and it, sorry to interrupt, but it just reminded mm. me of, uh, of this idea of flashlight that keeps coming up for me. I, have you heard that before? This idea no. of flashlight. So we all have a, a flashlight right at our third eye and that's our attention. Yeah. That's where we okay. put our attention and we can decide where we shine our flashlight. Totally. We can get really laser focused on something or we can broaden it and that's up to us, right? So mm -hmm. the idea of like, of, of choosing, which you said earlier, is everything's up to you, which I love that, you know, the choosing where to put that attention, I think is so key. And I, especially now than ever, you have, you, it's all over the place, right? Yeah, totally. That's why, that's why I think that's why I'm inspired by your project um, with, with Rad Academy. And I'd love for you to talk about ICL as well. Um, but like that, the idea of like focus, the idea of putting that flashlight where you want it to where, where you want it to grow where you want it's a to choice see. yeah yeah what you want to illuminate right right, right. like the, i think there's so much value in illuminating the dark stuff you know walking toward your fear because generally when you walk towards something you're scared of you realize oh that's not so bad right, <laughs> you know right 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 it's like turning on the lights looking for the boogeyman under the bed it's not there like it's all right here mm. you know but yeah so we we get to choose and to me, when you're, when you're chasing a dream, the decision is one of the most important parts of the journey. Cause once you decide there should be no looking over your shoulder, it should be all here, whatever comes my way, I've made the decision and I'm going to go. And then along the way, the self-awareness that you can develop. So you realize your train of thought is this serving me. Is it not like, how am I breathing? My breathing shallow, my breathing through my mouth, you know, who, what am I like self-soothing with, you know, all these things are in our control. And so that's why I, I love, you know, what you bring about and what you want athletes to focus on as well is like meditation and breath, because if you can own your breath, mm -hmm. right, that brings you back to the moment. And then if you're in the moment, you can choose, mm. right? You can choose how to respond. You can choose your thoughts. You can choose your next mode, mode of action. But if, if you're overcome by em emotion or anxiety or, or the moment, like you're not going to choose, you're just going to react you know, we want to respond. And so oh. for me, one of the antidotes to all that craziness where I can choose where I shine my flashlight is when I do own my breath because I've trained it. I don't just show up on game day, hoping that I can own my breath. Like I become great because I do it day to day, you know? Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite learnings of 2020, I was listening to a lot of people, Jocko Willing being one of them. Um, and he says this all the time. He's like, in times of duress and stress, you fall to the level of your training. So mm -hmm. if you're half-assed training, if you're only focusing on physical, but not the mental, the self-talk or your breath, like you're going to be in trouble. Right. You know, you might be on point physically, but you can't even use your tools because your brain's going to be a mess, mm. you know? So breath and meditation and self-awareness to me is like foundational. Um, but if you have breath, you can have everything. So Okay, I don't know so where that came from, but no, no, that's perfect. That's perfect. Because I actually want to talk about meditation because most champions that I've talked to on on in, on this podcast and with my project it's like almost like a compulsory component of mm. of their daily life right and like yes. like the starting point in the morning right and i i heard i think on that lewis howes um school of greatness episode i think you said it was a non-negotiable for you that meditation totally yes. could, could you just touch on that a little bit what meditation does for you and how to get started if someone is struggling with it well, meditation Gervais taught me because I always like I built it up like, oh, my God, I have to sit this way and my legs are too long and I can't. And he's like, don't <laughs> don't worry about that. He's like, yeah, meditation yeah. could be one conscious breath. Mm. Right. It could be 10. It could be five. It, you know, it's just you're quieting your mind and you're getting in touch with yourself. Right. To me, meditation has become I'm listening. Right. I'm always like listening for God to whisper in my ear. 
Love I'm that. not praying. I'm not actively thinking. I'm just, I'm just listening. Um, but for me, it's non-negotiable. I mean, look how fast I talk. Like I'm always hot. I'm always <laughs> up here. Like imagine if I didn't meditate, you know, like my head would pop off. But to me, what meditation gives me, it may, it, it makes, it allows me to become the eye of the storm. Right. And in the eye of the storm, it's calm, you know, and they're, they're, and it's just kind of how I want to be on the court, how I want to be within my marriage when things are hard or with my children. Like I want to, I want to have access to all of my resources, you know, cause I want to thrive throughout any situation, no matter how hard, how sad, how, whatever it is, I want the best of me to show up. And that's not going to happen unless I have that calm within. And, you know, when you have calm within it's in, it's mirrored in your environment, you know, mm-hmm. and meditation gives me that. And it's, it's a non-negotiable and, you know, ideally it's 15 minutes in the morning. Um, Sometimes that doesn't happen. And when it doesn't happen, I don't beat myself up anymore. You know, Um, I just, I will do five slow, deep breaths, you know, just my hand and my heart and just listening and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, so it can be whatever it is for you. It could be a walk. You Mm -hmm. could be washing the dishes, just wherever you're, whatever you want to be, you know, seen as your meditation, just be all there. Right. Yep. Love that. I I personally have been doing it in the morning. Um, first thing I do, you know, right after I wake up, kind of kind of like creates a flow throughout my whole day. Totally. You know, and when I don't do it, I notice a big difference. I notice I'm a little bit more like, okay, well, yeah, I'm more re- or-, or reactive. You know, like like um, you know, I'm 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 not responding with love and my inner being. I'm reacting. You know, yeah. but when I meditate and I get in touch with my inner being and I understand why I'm here, like I get to my why. You know, then I'm I'm responding with like with ease, like Abraham, totally. with ease, with with love, right. with with yeah. with um, like that like that joy that you talked about, you know. And and yeah. so I would love to transition that. I, I know we we only have a few more minutes, but I'd love for you to talk about flow. Um, and specifically, can you identify when you're in the in the game in the flow or in the zone? Can you can you like pinpoint it, or does it just kind of come and go? Man, well, for sure it comes and goes. <laughs> Um, I wish it just came (laughs) and stayed, but that's, you know, the unconditional part of what I'm working on. Um, you know, I, I feel like when I notice I'm having fun on the court, I'm, I'm, I'm in flow like a hundred percent, you know, um, I, the past couple of years since the last Olympics, you know, I've, I've been through so much like mentally and emotionally, like I, you know, define myself as a loser after winning bronze for so long, not after winning bronze, that that helped me feel like a winner again, but the, the loss of the semifinal match, like it crushed, crushed my identity really. And so I've really been on this journey, um, to just, I don't know, to get to, to love myself again, you know? And so I, what I'm trying to say is that flow is the ideal flow is very elusive. When I try to force it never shows up when I'm just in the moment is when it comes. So the training, the consistent training that I do within my breath, you know, with, um, you know, my mindfulness training, you know, just waking up my senses, giving myself a word to spell anything that is just bringing me back to the moment that allows for more flow. Um, I certainly Mm -hmm. want to live there more with Brookie, uh, Brooke and I, we went through so much Mm -hmm. in our first year together. So like, we were so like this and I like, and I don't mean to sound like arrogant, Mm -hmm. but I've always been like this always like starting at a very high point and then going up always. And Brooke and I were like this, we're like, holy hell. But which made me think too much and try to do too much and try to be someone I wasn't. And Brooke felt the same. And so moving forward, I think the gift of COVID, we were like, we recognize a, we're playing so uptight. We're trying to be perfect for each other. You're never going to do that. That's going to keep you limited and in handcuffs. Um, And we never reached flow. (laughs) One tournament, we had it together. Um, So for me, like I'm just focusing on myself, on my breath, just being me with all my heart and Brooke's doing the same and we're creating magic right now, which is really, really fun. Cause if you can find flow with someone else, I mean, it's just literally heaven on earth, you know, having it with yourself is one thing, having it with someone you're chasing a dream with is another. Um, and we're capable of that. So it's exciting. Misty and I had that a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the undercurrent of Misty and I living in flow a lot was just the, the deep, deep knowing that we got it. Right. You know, I think that allows for a lot. And this is an interesting follow-up to that. Is it something you can practice? Flow? Yeah. I think you practice being in the moment. Right. You know, and I think that, I mean, that's where flow happens. That's where anything of truth happens, you know, um, 
it's just everything is in the moment, you know, and if you're trying to premeditate or all these things, that's not flow to me. That's, that's premeditation. You know, you got to prepare, you got to do all these things, but it's like, when I'm in flow, I'm not thinking <laughs> like if I'm thinking I'm in deep, tr- I'm in deep trouble. I really right. am. There's some analy- analytical players, you know, that are incredible. I'm not that player. I'm very instinctive. And so when I find myself worrying about the opponents or whatever, I'm never going to be in flow. You know, I'm going to be reacting. I want to be dictating and, you know, leading the flow and responding and being water and dancing with whatever's thrown my mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. And the way I do that is by training myself to be in the moment which I guess is one of the elements of flow. Mm, I love that. Um, I did reach out to a few people before this, uh, this conversation. And one of them was coach Dane Selznick. <gasps> and I wanted to kind of read. A, yeah. I wanted I to read him. a quote that, that he, he said about you. Um, and I'd love to get your reaction. Okay. The most driven player I've ever coached truly a student of the game. She's always in the game every single nanosecond. One of those players that makes her partner better the moment they enter the arena. (laughs) You're going to make me cry. (laughs) Man, Aaron, I want to be those things. Like that means, that means so much to me that Dane sees that in me. Mm. You know, I I always wonder what people's experience of me is because I feel like I'm so much, (laughs) (laughs) you know, like I'm, I'm a lot of emotion. I talk a lot. I care a lot. Like, you know, I take up space. Um, and that's just all I know how to be. And Dane gave me his whole heart. Like Dane, yeah. what a beautiful man. Like he's a dear friend of mine. So for him to see yeah. that, I just, that, that hits my heart and it makes me want to be better. And I want to oh, be those things. Cool. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for that shout, gift. Yeah. Shout out coach Dane Stelznick. He's a, he's a friend and colleague for me. Um, I he's also wanted to read one more quote. Yeah. Um, I, this is a little longer, but this is uh Geeter. This is Chris McGee. And I have mad respect for Geeter, and I, I know you do as well. Um, Talk about for flow. anyone who doesn't know Geeter, <laughs> right? Like longtime <laughs> announcer for the AVP, the Pro Beach Volleyball Tour, and now he's uh, the host of the Lake Show on Spectrum Sports uh, for the Lakers. So I'm just gonna kind of I'm gonna see if I can make this short, but he he wrote quite a bit. So, no, so read what go. he's read what he wrote. Uh, I'm going to here we go. Kerry yeah, yeah. reminds me of Jordan and Kobe, Tom Brady, Karch the greatest to ever do it in their sport. A mindset that's just different. It can't be taught. The ability to combine the physical gifts and the mental toughness and sacrifice it takes to be the best. She's a winner in every sense of the word. A really cool attribute she has that should not fly under the radar is her respect and love for competition. I never saw her take a match for granted anywhere in the world. When she steps on the court, she does not cheat that moment. She is there to battle and always believes she's going to win. Fucking love that about her. (laughs) Nobody works harder on the mind and body than Carrie. Think of all the adverse hurdles and injuries she has faced and always comes back better. That's insane and it ain't easy, but that's work. My goodness. Uh, and he and he specifically asked me to Peter. read all of that because he texted me like a big text and I was like, man, that's really that's really cool. Well, you read it very well. Well, yeah, you would have um, broken my heart if you didn't read all that. <laughs> okay. I don't. I no. I pre- what I mean, Aaron. What a gift. Thank you for doing that. Um, you know, Gator. I just I have no words. You know, I mean, he. I think everything he said about me, I feel the same about him and his craft, yeah, and his life as a husband and as a daddy and as. A craftsman. The guy's incredible. Yeah. He lives. He he might live in flow more than anyone I've ever <laughs> met. To be honest with you, you know, he uh, when Casey and I got married, he introduced our wedding party, and he made the wedding perfect. Mm. Like he's just incredible. So for him to see all that in me, because he has, he's worked with Kobe. You know, he's worked right. along the best of the best, and he sees, he sees what it takes. And I just, I appreciate that he sees me. In my yeah. best, like those are some of my best qualities. And I think I have those. I, I love that he thinks that I own those. Hmm. Um, man, yeah, that just makes me want to go hit the gym right now. Right? <laughs> yes. You know, and whenever, it's so funny, like before every Olympics, you know, I we left Manhattan Beach, but Geeter would always, at some point in the quadrennial, he'd always like do his jog or be working out after me with Carrie, um, our mutual trainer. And he'd be like, you guys can do this. You're going to do this, right? And he's one, him and Rachel- Walkholder Scott, whenever they both said, you guys got this, I'm like, it's done. 
right. because I trust them so much and they know so much. And Geeter is that person mm-hmm. for me. Um, and you know, with everything that Dane says, you said all the kindness you've said, like, it's only because I'm surrounded by people showing me the way, you know, like I, I'm Aaron, it's such a gift to be surrounded by craftsmen. My coaches care so much. They're so sincere, so thoughtful. My parents, like the mo- role modeling I've had in my life is incredible. And now as a woman and, you know, someone who's raising children, like I'm so intentional about my environment and who I hang with and who I give energy to. And, you know, it's, it's like the biggest high five, Carrie, you're doing pretty amazing when I look at the people in my life, you know, and the opportunities. Yeah. So, and I include you in that, like what a gift this oh. podcast hour is for me. Like, thank you for the gift of this, you know, and to be able to talk about dreams and process, you know, it holds me accountable and makes me want to be better. And to hear those wonderful things from people I love. Thank you. Oh, right back at you. I, I really appreciate thank this. You. I, I just have like two more things and I, I want to let you promote your stuff. And then I'd love to have you back for a part oh. two, actually. Um, but one, one thing that comes to mind is, um, is this, this like entrepreneurial drive in you, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you have, you have these routes, you have this Olympic, you know, dream that's that you're, it's not over, right? You're still in. Oh. And now you're creating this entrepreneurial route that's a parallel to that. Mm-hmm. And that's extremely inspiring to me. And I'd love for you to just touch on that challenge, because that's not easy. I'm an entrepreneur myself. Oh my God. Right? And it's, it, <laughs> takes a lot of energy and I can only imagine going for the Olympics at the same time. So could you just, you know, talk about that parallel? Well, I mean, yeah, you know, so you're talking about my company platform 1440 P1440, which is my fourth child. Like I love it so much. It means so much to me and it means so much to me because it's, it's not a gift. It's a product, it's a company, but the whole heart and soul of the company is to give back to the sport that has given me everything. You know, our sport, as you know, is so deserving. It's so dynamic. It's so hungry. It just, it deserves so much. And in my opinion, it's so underserved. You know, it's not acknowledged in the marketplace. It's not acknowledged on TV. The companies are not lining up to sponsor Mm -hmm. these athletes or these leagues. And I want to change that, you know, and, and these, these juniors who you're working with consistently um, tell me if this is your experience. So many of them are overburdened and they're ill-equipped to handle the stresses of today on and off the court. And so within 1440, we started our first year, you know, we, we wanted to go after the elite of the elite, right? The best of the best in the sport, built our brand, um, had some great events, but we realized, A, that was so expensive (laughs) and having majors, you know, it just, it was a very finite thing to be able to put on these major events. So it's like, who, who in our community, we love everybody, but who, who needs us the most? And our focus became on the juniors because there's thousands and thousands of girls and boys who just want, you know, and sport teaches you character and it teaches you resiliency and all these things that allow you to live a good life. And so for the past years, we've been laser focused on the juniors, seriously, sincerely with the intention to get back to the elites of the elites, but we're focusing on the juniors and we're equipping them. We're empowering them. You know, we have digital suites of products where they can do exactly what I do. We have a training camp coming up um, here in Reno where we're bringing 11 athletes invite only to come and train with my coaches, my strength coach, my husband, myself, you know, we're going to have, we're going to have vision board sessions and, and, you know, like inspirational talks and and presentations along with the training because it's body, mind, and spirit, you know, and I've been, I've been through hell (laughs) and heaven in this sport. And the gift of all of that is to be able to share my wisdom in the hopes that someone could take a little spark of inspiration and it helps them to, you know, live their dreams. So being an entrepreneur is gnarly. You have to have a warrior spirit. You have to be sincere and believe in what you want, but fundamentally sincerity, belief, resourcefulness, and team, like everything that makes you a gold medalist will make you successful at being an entrepreneur, but being an entrepreneur is like a hundred times harder. <laughs> Because I'm not, I'm like, I'm not in charge of the end result as much, you know, like as an athlete, like I work hard and I get, I get my results, but as an entrepreneur, there's so many other variables and the marketplace and, you know, all these cooperative relationships. So God bless (laughs) you. And, and, and and you too. And, and I was just going to add to that list that you said, like being very selective about your flashlight and how broad you want it Mm. to be and how narrow you want it to be. Right. And how that's, that's tricky. It is. It is. Yes. And, and who you would like to allow into your light. I love your shirt, by the way. You know, uh, I know. Right. Well, I want to be right? happy. And I got my, and I got my spirit animal. I'm, I'm going to go. Oh, cool. 
which is very American. But I think like being an entrepreneur is very American to me. And the American spirit to me is one of the most beautiful things in the world because it's just pure desire and love Mm. and passion and, and autonomy, right? Like I can do this, you know, um, and accountability. That's what being an entrepreneur is, you know? And, um, yeah, I feel like we are all the CEOs of our own life. Yes. Right. So own it. Like there's no excuses, you know? And I feel like one of my most favorite Abraham quotes is do not argue for your own limitations. I, I want to live by that. If you ever hear me making me, if you ever hear me make an excuse, like flick me, like that's not okay. Right. You know, that's one of the first things my dad ever told me, Carrie, if you do something, do it right. The second things make no excuses. No one wants to hear it. Right. And so, um, as an entrepreneur, you can't, (laughs) you have to be very selective Um, But for us with 1440, we wanted to be everything to everyone right away because there were so many cooperative components, as Abraham says, because our sport is so underserved, but people are so ready. Mm -hmm. Everything is so teed up. But we right now we've refined ourselves to a very sincere small circle and we're going to go from there and build that foundation. You know, the, the triangle is the strongest structure in the world and it's because the foundation is so strong and so stable. And so 1440 now has an amazing foundation. Um, and the sky's the limit, you know? I love it. I love it. Last thing is to anyone struggling out there, whether they're a, you know, youth athlete, a coach, a parent, just anybody who might be listening to this, who's going through a tough time. What do you say to that person? Man, I think something that helped me was Jordan Peterson, who I just recommend him. A, pay attention to like what you're feeding yourself, right? Are you watching too much news? What social media, you know, like make things coming into your life when you're in a funk, make it positive, right? Like real, like sincere and positive. So Abraham Hicks, Jordan Peterson, for me, um, anyone who inspires you, go for it. Your podcast, cool. um, you know, <laughs> Finding you. Mastery with Michael Gervais. But right. something that really helped my brain was that this shit's hard. Mm-hmm. Like life is hard. And I honestly didn't know that. Like I, I thought, I just thought that if things were hard, it meant I wasn't good enough or I had room for improvement, but life is fundamentally very challenging, you know, and right now we're all going through a very challenging time. So just recognize that, right. It's okay. hard. And then to me, it's like, where we started this conversation, I'm signing up for this. I'm choosing this. I'm choosing this because then I won't be a victim to it. Right. right. And I can master right. the situation and then lean on your people. You know, I feel like when people are in funks, Um, certainly this is my experience on the court and off. I tend to isolate. I tend to, you know, become a hermit. And I think that solitude is very powerful, right? Because you can kind of get to the depths of what you are, but ultimately we are surrounded by greatness. We are surrounded by support and love and isolation when you're in a bad space to me is like the worst thing you can do. You know, I've seen, I've seen people with addictions going through that. And the moment they isolate my, my, my fear level goes up times a million, because that's just a scary place to be when you're dark and you're by yourself, you know? Right, so have right. the courage and the strength to be vulnerable and to reach out to someone you love and trust. Um, and you don't need to carry the weight of the, you know, the world in your own shoulders, but no, you can for as long as you have to. And then there's always support for you for sure. Cool. I know, we're, I know we're over our time, but I did last question. I promise. Yep. What does, what does fulfillment mean to you? specifically having achieved the the peak of athletic achievement three times going for a fourth like what does fulfillment mean to you you know if we're going to put this in the volleyball context um my most favorite my most fulfilling olympics was the london london 2012 olympics um not only were kate casey my husband and i very deeply connected we had our boys they were there so my my life side of my life was beautiful and connected but misty and i who were chasing this big bold audacious dream something had never been done before we were so deeply connected and that depth of connection allows for just beautiful relationships. Like to me, it all comes down to relationships with myself, with God, with my people, you know? And so what's the word you said? Fulfillment. Fulfillment. So fulfillment comes to me um, with that level of connection with, you know, if it's a solo journey, the level of connection with myself and my God, right. And I'm, I'm just all there with all my heart on a team mission. It's just that level of connection that we are in this together unconditionally right? No matter what is certain our way, we're going to allow every obstacle to bring us closer together like this and not like this. And Misty and I did that on the way to London. 
Um, and it felt so special, you know, fulfillment is a feeling it's not an end yeah. result. And what mm -hmm. I'm after on the court is a feeling, you know, um, you know, I, I want certain stats, but I really want the feeling, the feeling of confidence, the feeling of peace within yeah. the feeling that I can dance. So fulfillment to me is the ultimate feeling. Yeah. And it all comes from connection. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. Carrie, you brought oh. the fire today. This okay. is so fun. This was such a great <laughs> conversation. Oh, right? well, thank you. For like, this was awesome. I, I'm so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, before we sign off, just tell folks how they can connect more with you and where they can find oh. you. Well, thank you for that honor. First and foremost, uh, at Platform 1440. Um, if you want to check out Rad Academy or become part of our community, go to p1440.com. Um, that would be the biggest gift to me. We have, we're doing great things. And I feel like the more we spread the, the good word, the more people will realize that. Um, and then at Carrie Lee Walsh on across all social handles, but 1440 is my baby. It's our baby. You know, we're, we have a training camp coming up and I can't wait to show it to the world. And if you ever have any input on what we're doing, I'd certainly love to hear it because we want to serve, sure. you know, we're here to serve. We're here to empower people to excellence and to live fulfilling lives. So, um, it yes. all feels great. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate that invite and, and, you know, thank you again for your time. And, uh, this is an open invite for you to come back. And right. I have like, I have like a hundred more questions for you. So we should do another Okay, one. well, I look forward to that for sure. Let me go okay. get some taste of the road again. I'm, I'm told our first tournament would be early March. We're going to have a season. The Olympics are coming. So we'll have lots to talk about. Oh, yeah, let's go. Best of luck on the this journey. And, you know, best of luck. And, and you know, you, you have a fan here. So, you know, I'll be rooting for you guys. And, and right. again, really appreciate your time Onward. today, Carrie. No, you did great. Thank you for, for the honor. Onward. Yeah. Take care. Yee. Bye, Bye. thank you. Bye-bye. This episode is brought to you by DAF Global. If you're looking to start a podcast or you have a podcast and you're looking for editing services, hit up my guys, Oliver and Garrett at DAF Global. They're awesome. They help me with this podcast and they take care of all kinds of different services like editing and audio enhancement. And they're great to work with. They're also offering a 10% discount to all within the game listeners. So hit my guys up at DAF Global on Instagram and also on their website, www.dafglobal.co.uk.